Hi there, Mouseketeers. Welcome to the Disneyland beat where our toes tap to a Disneyland drum. And we always whistle while we work. Well, we spent the week at Disneyland and DCA. It was magical. Warm afternoons and cool mornings and evenings. Seeing some good friends and making incredible memories. And we noticed a few things we wanted to share with you. Come on into Disneyland with us. Like, subscribe, and stick around. Disneyland is your land. Take an adventure into your pirates, eh? Make the jump to life, Bill. Hi, I'm Amy. And I'm TC. And one of the things we couldn't help but notice is just how beautiful Disneyland is right now. Though there is some long-term construction happening and things that need to be done, it's not all that noticeable. Most of the park is open, accessible, and looking incredible. Crowds are pretty busy from like 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., but it's not bad or too overwhelming. The guests and the cast members seem to be in good spirits, and we met lots of wonderful people. We noticed a lot of little stuff, though, that we'd like to point out. For one, we noticed some new tarps that were put up in the old nature's mind train through Wonderland tunnel right off of Big Thunder Trail. Not really sure what's going on here. These tunnels actually used to have the train itself riding through them, but they've been open for years now. Maybe some critters, raccoons, and possums have gotten into the tunnels and Disney has had to try and close it off. Hope they do something a bit more attractive in the long run. Over at Paradise Gardens, we noticed that the old Goofy Sky School, a classic wild mouse style roller coaster that's always a fun time, is in need of some serious maintenance. Cosmetically, at least, the ride seems to be operating just fine. In fact, we rode it twice, and the huge bump that usually gets you right before the drop didn't seem to happen. It was really smooth and fun. But the paint job, not so much. There's peeling graphics off of some of the billboard and lots of rust on anything underneath the track. We also wonder, as it's kind of low-hanging fruit, if a Pixar-themed makeover might be in store for this little wild mouse. What Pixar theme do you folks think might work with Goofy's Sky School? This last week, we noticed that the Disneyland horticultural team is really really outdone themselves with the plants in the park, all looking healthy, happy, refreshed, and phenomenal. Everything was thriving, looking great. Snow White's Wishing Well and Grotto looked amazing with new plantings, as did the Jungle Cruise and all of Adventureland, Downtown Disney, the Storybook Land, Canal Boats, Galaxy's Edge, and Tomorrowland's green spaces. We noticed some signage on the Frontierland gates that we think has been newly refreshed or it's even new, pointing out some cool historical information about the land. One gives you some information on the flags of the revolution war that are displayed, and the other discusses the log fort that makes up the gates to Frontierland. Space Mountain was running great in our visit, and the ride, lift hill, and sound were all awesome, but we did see that a bunch of the disco balls were not turning, and that many of those starlight sources could be upgraded to make the stars a lot more visible. Still great to have the classic version back, though. We noticed the Finding Nemo Submarine Lagoon construction walls down, and even saw the subs testing at one point. Right now, all the bubbles are not going, so you can see into the water and see all all of the moving animatronics and beautiful scenery, as well as the track and the lighting. It's really cool to watch. Hank, the octopus from Finding Dory, has joined the ride on the rock where we thought the seals might be. But Hank looks great, and he's giving the side eye to the seagull buoy, which has also returned. The whole thing is just as beautiful as ever, and we were actually a bit surprised at just how excited we were to see it all back. It adds so much to Disneyland. We were happy to see lots of characters out and wandering around, not just doing stationary meet and greets. They were out playing with the kiddos in Fantasyland, and that's always fun to see. And over at DCA, Avengers Campus always seems to have someone out to greet you, or you can catch some classic characters at Carthay Circle. It was fun seeing all the Matterhorn Mountain waterfalls functioning again. The gardens looked gorgeous. The ride was looking pretty good to us, though when we rode, the Through the Ice Herald effect wasn't working. Still, both tracks were going and operations seemed to be rumbling along. We noticed that the Elliott popcorn bucket is available again and cast members said that they had a lot of them. But you have to get into Disneyland to get one of them. They are not available at Downtown Disney. We noticed lots of patriotic decorations and bunting throughout the resorts, and the 4th of July fireworks were incredible. There have been some massive crowds for the nighttime spectaculars, especially the earlier shows that all happen around 9 to 9.30 p.m. However, the later shows and parades were far less crowded. So if your group can handle staying up late, we were seeing great spots for the late night parade, world of color, and fantastic performances up to the last minute. We noticed that mornings, particularly at DCA right now, are really quiet and slow. 
We were able to ride close to everything in the park in a few hours one overcast weekday morning at DCA, and it was really fun jumping from attraction to attraction. We think with the late nights people are putting in, a lot of guests are having trouble making it to the park at 8 a.m., and so they're strolling in an hour or two later most weekdays. Take advantage of that if you can. Radiator Springs Racers, as usual, has a very long standby line, but single rider or lightning lane moves very quick. It is running and delivering a good ride, however it did have a few issues that have been the same for maybe months now. Sheriff doesn't move forward to do his bit, he just stays static to deliver his lines and at Luigi's you don't get to see the final white wall tiger effect in the mirror, the curtain doesn't open. Otherwise it's all there, which is good to know considering the cost of lightning lane for that one. Apparently the issue is, is they can't get the parts they need due to the global supply chain issues. We did see the cars go down a couple of times during our visit, but nothing that lasted too long. Our ride through was great fun, but a long wait. And also in Cars Land over at Sarge's Surplus, if you collect the little metal cars, there is currently the ride vehicles for Radiator Springs Racers and Tomaters Junkyard Jamboree available for sale. It's a nice addition to our cars collection. Now we have all the ride vehicles. Another thing we noticed this week is how peaceful Galaxy's Edge is at night. The crowds tend to be light as Rise of the Resistance wraps up its Operation Day. And there are lots of incredible immersive details to find amongst the trees and building. The lights are low and it's a nice place to hang out for a while. And something else we noticed at Oga's. The Walk Up app never seems to be effective. You sign up and wait and you never hear back. But it seems the better idea is to just get in line and wait until you talk to a cast member. If you have a smaller group, we bet you won't have to wait long at all. We got right in. The drinks are good, the cast members are in character, the souvenirs are overpriced, and the experience is awesome. We noticed that Disneyland is keeping pretty quiet about Lightyear. He may have had a few live appearances a couple weeks ago, and there was some merch at the Buzz Lightyear gift shop and at Nick's Knacks, but Turning Red had a bigger park presence still, we thought. We also found out that the World of Color dessert party is worth it, at least once. The price tag is high, but the experience was amazing. We got really scrumptious desserts we couldn't have finished if we had wanted to. And the cast members went above and beyond, giving us an incredible experience, and the view was awesome. Ah, uh, we really had a wonderful time. Well, that's it for us today, Mouseketeers. We hope you have a wonderful week and that we see you real soon. Thanks, everyone. See you real soon. Bye.